Okay, folks. There she is. 2022 Sierra F300L. Picked her up at Glendale Honda right up the street. Zero miles on it. Full disclosure, this is not the first ride. I think I have a... I could check right now, but I think I almost hit 100 miles, to be honest. I've only had it for a few days, but... We can check that now on the digital dash. 98 miles. So since this took me about two months to get, my hazard's on. Since this took me about two months to get, um, I just started ordering parts in the meantime. And, uh, so I got this rear rack. I think it's just like an Amazon one. It looked the most solid actually out of all the other name brand ones. And I think it was 80 bucks or 85 bucks or something. And then I got the Nelson rig tank bag, which I just took off the T-dub. And then I ordered this uh, adventure spec fairing for the Sierra 300 l Um, a lot of other stuff planned, but as of now, I kind of like the way it is. It's quiet. It feels super restricted, but at least for the sake of breaking it in, I don't really care. I'm so used to bashing the T-dub around, I'm kind of like petrified to do anything with this, to be honest. It's so nice. It's like weird how nice it is. So I'm going to go up through uh, Angela's National Forest, which is pretty much in my backyard. And we'll see how it does up there. I've only been really riding it around town, just trying to get past the uh, break-in period. Which, the manual states is 300 miles, so I'm just going to cruise for 300 miles. Um, do an oil change, probably I'll just do it right at 300, and then I think I'm good to go after that. And compared to the TW, the service intervals on this thing are crazy. Like, I think you check the valves for the first time at... 12,000 or 16,000 miles or something like that and then oil changes go forever on this too so that part's cool but just riding it the first hundred miles at least in comparison to the to the TW um, the hugest difference so far is probably digital dash just seeing uh, being able to see which gear I'm in is something that I wasn't expecting to be such a big difference. Um, being able to see my RPMs is really cool. I have like a clock, a gas gauge. There's so many things on it um, that are a huge advantage from the T-dub, so that's cool. What's up, boys? I wonder where they're going. Yeah, so obviously the power advantage. The other huge thing is the sixth gear is huge. Um, first through fifth really feels similar to uh, a T-Dub super short gears like I'm in fifth right now I'm doing 29 miles an hour doesn't feel it's like sitting at you know 4,000 rpm which is normal and then the sixth gear I think is just really long that's kind of its purpose it's like a short one through five like a normal dual sport and then a long sixth, sixth gear so 
you just barely tap it and it almost feels like it's magnetic or something how it snaps in the gear maybe it is go straight up this highway a little bit and I'm in the foothills and right at the entrance of the forest and one thing I will say I was kind of under the I don't know why I was kind of under the impression that uh, I don't know if you could see the dash but you could see almost at 60 in six gear not even at 6,000 rpm so just to get an idea of how it cruises I don't know why I was kind of under the impression that the bike was gonna be faster um, as far as top speed I'm at 60 slight uphill at 65 right now and the bike kind of has like a little wobble like it feels like the front wheel kind of dances around but not bad I just again I don't want to like gun it because only 100 miles on it so I'll kind of wait till the engine's more broken in but I was under the impression that I would be able to kind of like sit at 75 or something no problem and not really the case but I mean I could keep up with traffic if I wanted to I think I mean obviously I'm in LA so people speed like mad out here but the bike doesn't feel like it's gonna blow up by any means I guess I just thought I would be able to at least sit at like 70 at a lower rpm but I guess you could fix that with a sprocket if you wanted to but it's not the biggest deal to me I'm not trying to fly in the fast lane or anything but I can do this now without stress of like I'm gonna blow my engine doing 60 in the slow lane on the TW um, I'd be more comfortable doing like a longer a longer highway uh, distance on this bike I guess 60 is like very comfortable and again I'm kind of probably can't tell but I'm going pretty uphill right here but it feels good all right in we go I already feel so much more uh, comfortable riding through here on this oh yeah <laughs> it's insane it's so uh I, I have i think it's mainly probably due to tires but it's so nimble and uh just easy to easy to manipulate at a at like a cruising speed the I have that huge Shinko tire on the T-Dub and the front end is just like steering a tank. Normally coming up here, I'm kind of like panicking on the T-Dub. I'm like whining out and forth to keep speed up or like almost losing it in fifth gear and downshifting a lot. Um, I'm in fifth gear right now doing 35 and I have like tons of power not tons but I have power available to get through the rest of fifth gear if I need it um, even going uphill so that's pretty cool and I don't feel pressured by the cars around me even though I'll probably pull over just because people fly through here I'll let this guy over right now guy out too I just want to cruise people go people go wild through here um, yeah so first impressions when I picked the bike up I'd never seen one in person just because they're kind of scarce I'd never even seen the CRF 250L and the guy pulled it out of service and I was like whoa this thing is huge 
Uh, so it was kind of intimidating at first. And I didn't realize how small, when I got the T-Dub, I was like, whoa, this is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I pictured just like a mini bike because they're known to be so small. Um, so when I got this, I didn't really know what to expect and it was much, uh, much bigger of a bike than I thought it would be just overall. Um, and then seat height, I thought would obviously be a big deal. I'm about 5'7", so the T-Dub was pretty perfect for me. I could, you know, get at least the ball of my feet down on both sides and the suspension sinks so much. Um, with this bike, to be completely honest, it's not much different. It's definitely taller. I think the bigger difference than the height is the weight proportion of the bike. The T-Dub feels very like bottom heavy. Um, so when you're sitting on it, I don't know, the weight feels low and you have the small tank and you know, there's no, the bike is so bare that you feel like you can just kind of manhandle it. This feels very top heavy and thinner tires. It just feels more like bulk, like the bulk is up top. So when you're, have a foot over on the bike or something at a light, you feel like you have to carry the weight with your arms a little bit more. Um, so that's probably a bigger difference to me than the seat height. And then everything about, uh, everything about the suspension is true. The rear shock feels like it sinks about two feet once you get on the bike. Um, which for the shorter people, I think is a good thing. Like if you, uh, like I said, when they pulled it out, I was like, holy cow, am I gonna get on this thing and ride home? But once I sat on it, the suspension literally ducked like a foot. It dropped like a foot. So I'm comfortable on the bike and I'm not even thinking about turning or anything. It just kind of takes it. One thing I'm trying to get used to on the bike is the I don't know I guess I don't know if thro if it's throttle response or what but it's it's kind of hard for me to finesse or get used to finessing that it feels like when you let off the gas you're like jolting and then you pick up and you're jolting back I, I don't know if that's a difference because uh, difference in fuel injection versus carbureted. Maybe the mechanics of a carbureted bike, you just have more of a gradual, uh, I don't know, gradual motion with power coming to and from, but this is like really, almost feels like electric. Um, like an electric motored vehicle where your power's there and then it's gone. So. That's been hard to get used to. I think I've heard people say too that it's uh, you can kind of you can kind of get rid of it with detuning the sorry not the opposite of detuning you can uh, kind of opening the bike up a little. It can be like a symptom of the bike being restricted or I don't know how true that is, but. I would love to do exhaust and open up the air filter and everything eventually. I'm really waiting for uh, just more options to be available. I'd love to do like a FMF pipe on this bike, uh, but it's not available yet. So that would be my choice number one. And then flash the computer, something I couldn't do with the T-Dub, so that would be uh, interesting to see how much this thing can actually come to life. Um, even the stock power is like such a huge difference to me versus the T-Dub, because the T-Dub's so weak. Alright, I'll let this car over right now. Ugh.
Park City. Especially now after riding it for a couple days, uh, I feel almost just as comfortable on this now as I do on the T-Dub, but I'd have to go back and ride it again. Yeah, I haven't shifted out of fifth gear, I think, this whole time. This is so cool. All right, I've kind of reached the peak. So I'm in some uh, pretty legit forest now. It's nice and chilly. And there's nobody up here. Straight through roadkill. Kind of nervous to take this thing off road. I'd hate to drop it, but it's inevitable. I really want to get some replacement plastics. Maybe like if uh, the Cherbies, I'm sure eventually they'll come out with a kit. I know they did for the 250L. I would love to like throw some replacement aftermarket plastics on here and just put these in like a trash bag in my closet for years. Cause they're really, really nice. And I think this bike could look cool. Uh, I don't know, I kind of want to do it like a sand color. but I think I'm stuck on these until someone comes out with uh, some options. Well, I guess my water's just been bleeding out this whole time. myself riding a long time a long distance on this that's really why I made the upgrade um, it's just uh, not practical to go so long distance on the t-dub and ideally that's what I want to do is I don't know like ride to Mexico and camp if I want or ride up to Big Bear not have to worry about towing my bike and gas is a huge thing I have to tow the t-dub everywhere I mean I did ride it out to El Mirage but that was such a such a mission I think I could do it on this so comfortably and uh, 
yeah that was really kind of my whole intention of upgrading and I am planning on selling the T-Dub I just want to definitely do a couple uh, couple more trips with now that I have two bikes any friends that want to go ride that we never could go before and especially my brothers um, my younger brother doesn't have a bike and my other brother has a quad and we never all go ride together so I at least want to do one trip with them before I sell it but I'm definitely gonna cash out on it I think those have doubled in value in the last two years so I'll get my money for it while I can and just enjoy this bike so I probably made not officially yet but I'll probably make a good two grand off the t-dub um, just because it's become that kind of commodity and kind of rare so it's kind of like I got this well if, depending how you look at it I'm look I I'm looking at it as if I got this bike for like you know no dealership fees no tax and a little bit of a discount so that's pretty cool it's essentially like I got this bike for five grand flat or something and this bike retails for I think I got the non ABS I think this retails for 54 something 53 or 54 can't remember exactly but uh, out the door you're looking at like 7k and I bought this up the street um, from Glendale Honda and they're a cool small little dealership I'd go in there to buy bike stuff for the T-Dub all the time just like I don't know electronics or tire irons or something so I've been going in there for a year and I wasn't trying to heckle or negotiate really I mean it seems like it's kind of difficult to negotiate especially a bike like this like what am I gonna grind them for 500 bucks I could just get someone else in there to buy this thing within an hour or so uh, yeah but for anyone curious I think out the door in California in LA uh, it was about seven grand uh, and that's delivery freight uh, LA County tax on top of MSRP um, so no regrets the bike is awesome actually I would love like a KTM or a Husky or something but I am not gonna drop 12 grand on a bike so once the uh, I knew the 300 thing was gonna pick up um, so I was just kind of waiting to see who put one out and then once this thing came out like oh my god that's the one that I gotta get so I have been waiting to get this for a long time finally got it and I definitely will miss the t-dub I don't want to sell it but I can't really justify having just you know five grand sitting there I don't even have a proper garage I have like a, a shed where I'm luckily able to store um, this and the t-dub but it's just not practical and it's might as well sell it while the market's high and the and the demand is there so I'll miss it but I think we'll get a couple good more trips out of it uh, but I'm loving this thing and you know what at least on the road these tires feel pretty good I know people kind of uh, bash these tires or they swap them out instantly. Um, I'm sure that's for because of how they perform in the dirt, especially the front wheel, but my plan is to kind of just put in some solid miles on the street 
get comfortable on the bike. I get really, uh, I get really comfortable on bikes just riding around like this. And then I find that when I take it off road, I'm that much more familiar with it and I kind of know what it's gonna do. So that's kind of my goal is just get super used to it on the road, break the engine in before I start adding parts or climbing hills or trying anything crazy. Um, man, it is so nice out here. It's insane. <laughs> this is crazy. So yeah, that's kind of the plan. I eventually want to do like some nice uh, aggressive, aggressive tires, like some Moto Z's. Uh, but for now, whatever. I'm not in a rush to switch these up. They feel pretty good. I definitely trust them. They don't feel, they feel great. Man, I can't even see downtown. It's so smoggy. Crazy. In a nutshell, if anyone is considering this bike um, as an upgrade to the T-Dub, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are contemplating because price range is similar, um, the style is similar, and if I had never owned either before, I, it's hard to say what I would go with, but coming from riding the T-Dub for a year and a half straight and then transitioning to this bike. I would probably choose this all day, even as a shorter person, um, just because it seems it's just as easy to manage. It's just as easy to store. I pull it out of the garage and push it through two parked cars every day. And I don't know, I just feel really comfortable with it. And uh, as far as features, you get fuel injection, you get two disc brakes, you get digital dash. Um, you get a slightly bigger engine, you get the really long service intervals, so I don't know, as far as bang for the buck, I would say that this, uh, this wins over the T-Dub any day, even though I do love the T-Dub, and this is all speaking before I've even taken this bike off road, so who knows, maybe I'll absolutely hate it and like wash out on every turn, but... Uh, I don't know. I feel really good on this bike, so we shall see. And the sixth gear. Um, one thing I will say that I totally forgot about. Um, for anyone getting this adventure spec fairing or interested in it. There is something I know that I did not realize until I actually went to figure out how to install it. And that is that there's, there's a sliver of the dash of this cluster up here um, that is kind of an indicator for uh, anything really. It could be, uh, oh, why not? Let's hop on, never, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of an indicator for um, check engine light, blinker, neutral, and uh, I guess this iteration of the fairing kind of blocks that, that sliver of gauges on the top of the cluster, so it's not the biggest deal to me, to be honest, like, the only thing I could see being really bad is like check engine light and I mean if you really wanted to and you stopped at a light or something you could kind of bend over and, and check it out if you needed to um, other than that you can see the gear indicator if you're a neutral I'm kind of a freak about checking my blinkers every two minutes so not concerned about that um, but that is one thing to note that I did not know is that it does block that part of the dash and 
I only found that out because uh, Adventure Spec made like a getting like some weird rattle. Yeah, Adventure Spec made some kind of installation video of their of their product catalog for all CRF 300 products and. The YouTube comments were kind of roasting them, so I ended up finding out that way. But I guess there's previous versions of the fairing that were covering way more of the dash, so uh, to me, the way it is now isn't too bad. It's still it's still uh, worth it. And the main reason I got it was so I could throw uh, like a dual USB port here. Wow, this thing vibrates like insane. Um, I want to throw the dual USB port here and eventually throw like a Garmin, like a Garmin unit on that. Um, so, still worth it to me to be honest. But I could see that being a big deal for people who absolutely want. Uh, want visibility on those uh, on whatever light is being thrown up top there it does really start rumbling at like past 62 I noticed and I'm going downhill now it's like let's see it's crazy it's got a lot more power like it can keep going but it really starts vibrating like the second I hit 63, so I don't know. Interesting. I guess I'll have to watch more videos and see if anyone addresses that. <coughs> but at least it does the speed limit. Unlike the T-Dub.